Today, we're gonna to be talking about composition. So, someone in, I don't know if it was another YouTube video or Critique the Community YouTube video, somebody commented and said, I'm having trouble with composition. You guys mention composition all the time, but you don't really explain in detail what you mean. And maybe we critiqued one of his images poorly because of composition or something. So he said, why don't you show us images that you like for composition and then talk about it? So I told you, pick out some images. I'm gonna go make some food. I came back, here the images are. Yes. So I, I have not seen these before. So I'm, I'm hoping that these are all good examples of composition. These are images that I went on the community. These are under popular, which means they're kind of trending right now. Okay. But they're not the most highly rated images of all time. You, okay. you can see that as well on our community. But I thought it'd be fun to bring up some images that are kind of fresh that neither one of us have seen. Um, some of these images, I think, break the rules of composition. And then some of them probably follow the rules of composition. A lot of these images are also just badass images too. So I might have been persuaded to pick some images that just really stood out on the page. Okay. But I think they still will have an interesting commentary on composition. All right, so some basic composition rules before we get into it. The rule of thirds, you wouldn't normally put the subject right in the middle of the frame. So this would be kind of a rule of thirds. Yeah, and even, you know, how we have ourselves framed up here, uh, you know, we, uh, we could put our heads in the... the Another uh, compositional element would be like centering everything dead center where all the lines converge to one single point. Yep. Um, the golden aspect ratio, the, the spinning conical like shape. Snail. Yeah, shell. it's funny. I, I, you know, I find all that stuff very interesting. Learned about it in high school, college and everything. I When you, when you look through the viewfinder, are you putting that overlay on top of... No, certainly not. Uh, maybe maybe you do it a little bit subconsciously, but I think that some people go a little crazy with it, you know. And I've you you can make it fit on a part of every image. Can you? I've seen crazy images where it, you know it's like somebody fits it in the ear, and then it fits on somebody's nose, and then their arms like this, and it fits right here. How and would so, it fit on this framing right now? Uh, you know, I, I think I think the way your head fits into the uh, bookcase or whatever this is and back here. And the line here. goes through the books and then leads up into your head. Exactly, and there's like a, a conical shape here somehow, no, right, and right, it right. circles well, around this. Before we bore everyone with yes. these hypotheticals that they may or may not be aware of, let's dig into some images. Okay. And we will see which rules are broken and what rules are embraced. And then if there's anything that we would have suggested differently. All right, so I haven't seen any of these images. So just before we start, I also wanted to include a wide variety of different types of images. Um, most of them are gonna be three to four stars, maybe there's a five, but it's gonna span all genres. Okay. So I wanted it to not just be landscapes or wedding pictures. Okay. First one is a landscape. So this first shot, uh, you know, when it comes to rule of thirds or whatever, maybe you could say there's some rule of thirds going on in the upper right hand corner where the top of the mountain is to the top of the frame and the bottom left hand corner where the top of that bottom dark mountain is in the frame right maybe that's a, around the third line um the subject of the image to me feels like this glowing yellow spot in the middle and they've put it right in the middle in this case i kind of feel like it's working like yeah. i i i'm digging this composition um and yeah, when I, when I looked at this, I first thought, oh, this is just a dead-on composition. They put the most interesting part of the scenery dead center. But because there's so many layers to this, and the coloring on this is just so incredible, that your mind and I do go to different corners and wander through the image. But everything still kind of leads you to the central point. Normally, if I would imagine this is a very clear day, depending on the lighting and the scene, I probably would point the camera down, I would imagine. But in this case, putting everything dead center like this, I think works better than if you had kind of removed more of the sky and made it more about just the landscape and the, the foreground element. There's not really a foreground element right up in front like a lot of landscape photographers would do. Yeah, this is more about mood and feeling than yeah. it is, here's a location that you should look at. Whoa. So this was an image that really caught my eye. 
there's a lot of rules I feel like that are being broken here. There's a lot of angles and lines and blurriness and I just thought this was a pretty cool image, something that we don't normally see. So I included that in here, but now I guess we have to talk about how this is actually laid out in the frame. So I might still say that there's some rule of thirds going on here. If you look at this yellow part of the sail that's coming down and hitting the mast, that's close to around a third of the frame. Yeah. Um, so there is something going on there. The I whole boat is sitting on the bottom third of the frame. Yep. And I feel like, uh, you know, with all of these leading angular lines and everything, I feel like it's kind of drawing your eye into the middle of the frame. I find it very interesting. This is an image that uh, I don't think the average person would take because they would think that, you know, it's not wide enough. I'm cutting these yeah. people off on the left. I can't see the top of the sail, I, you know. But this image is really working to me. And I wonder how they shot this because the center mast where it meets the actual front of the boat is so sharp. But then it almost looks like there's these other layers and masks on top. Like it's, I mean, when you look at the, uh, the lettering up there, I can't tell if the faint lettering is lettering on the opposite side. I guess it is backwards. Maybe that's what's happening, but your mind just registers all this blurry motion. And I just keep thinking how much motion would you have and still get the center of the frame so sharp? Um, maybe that's just the nature of like the sails flapping around and everything, but yeah, however they did know. it. I don't know that that's true. Part of me thinks that this is just Photoshop to look like this. And some, I mean, the cloud in the upper left-hand corner looks like uh, uh, watercolor painting to me. So I don't know how, how they got that to look like that, but. One obvious uh, rule that they're doing here is you have the lines from the mast on the left just going straight through the corner of the frame down there, mm -hmm. leading you right into the front, into the top of the image, which is really nice. And then I think the biggest thing I take away from this is what you said is it's just cropped so tight. They didn't shoot ultra wide and include everything in the scene. This, for a lot of photographers, might be cropped too tight, at least what they would initially think, but I think that's what's making this work for itself. All right, so is this from our community? No, this was, I just wanted to show kind of what the golden rule looks like in action. <laughs> this is my point, this is my point. You can fit this golden rule thing on anything uh, <laughs> if you try hard enough. I don't enough. know, I think this image specific, I mean, look at the arch of his back, it's perfect. <laughs> What, what, there's nothing perfect about this bear. It's dying of morbid obesity. <laughs> no, I'm not making commentary on the bear, but I'm just saying that top arch, I mean, that's a very specific You're saying curve. from an artistic standpoint, this image is flawless. Um, I mean, the composition's flawless. Okay. Next up. That so, wild looking. when I saw this image, I think what caught my eye is the crop, you know? And I think cropping is gonna be a big part of this expose, this conversation. Um, and maybe you could say that the eye is sitting perfectly on a, a point within the rule of thirds as well, but it's just, it's, they've taken an elephant and they've made it so abstract and they have such moody lighting, hard light that's casting shadows and then they've really played with the, the color and the contrast. I think this image is killer. This is really cool. I could see a whole series on different animals' eyes. Obviously, you need a big animal to kind of shoot it in this what way. What is going on with the, uh, with the reflection off this animal's skin? I don't know that this is an elephant, maybe it is. But it almost looks like there's glitter or something on its skin, the way that it's reflecting light back into the camera. I think uh, it's just the way their skin is. It's just very rough with lots of pores. The hmm. light's very hard. And then I don't know in the bottom left if it's slightly wet skin, but it has a different texture there too. I just saw this image and it just really jumped off the community. So I feel like, you know, looking from the top to bottom, the eye is placed around the one third mark there. I have no doubt if you could add a uh, conical shape to the obese bear, you could probably find a place here with the bags under the eye. So uh, yeah, super interesting The question I have with an image like this though is, 
are there any rules? Could you literally put the eyeball, imagine you could rotate the canvas or move your camera position. Could you place the eye anywhere on this because the subject matter is so interesting and it's so abstract that this would work regardless, like is there a crop you could do? I mean, kind of whatever I do looks kind of interesting. I don't know, I, I still think there's mistakes that you could make. One thing I do notice is if I put the eye down on the bottom left like this, mm -hmm. the, the, the black iris of the eye, I guess, is looking down to the left. It does make it feel a little awkward if you make the eye looking out of the frame. You know, speaking about that, um, we were always told with videos and movies and stuff, you always want your subject looking into the frame. So you can see like this camera on me right now. When I look at Patrick, the dead space in front of me is where has right. the most amount of room. If I moved like way up here, yeah. that would feel awkward. But I've seen so many documentaries recently that put people looking, out, looking of out of the frame, like right at the edge of the frame. And it's just, you know, learning so, about the rules and breaking them. So this image, I have to say, it's one of those photographs that pops off better when it's small. I don't know that I love this picture, but there's so much going on. There's so many angles and lines and it, it has this urban feel to it. Um, it just caught my eye and, and maybe somebody might hate that some of these posts are so dead in the center and break it up. But it was just something very different that I didn't think a lot of people would do in composing an image around, I guess it's like a tennis court with a bunch of different fences. But I thought it was interesting enough to include in this. Yeah, all the, all the lines that are going on, vertical, horizontal, and then angled lines as well. I, f I feel like it just kind of makes your eye dance all over the place. Subject is towards the, towards the uh, right third, but um, I, I would say certainly her face is not down the, you know, one third line. She's probably pushed into the left a little bit. But uh, yeah, very interesting. What do you think of the, the composition with the leg? leg being cut off and just one, like we've worked with some photographers like clay cook who loves to cut off limbs and he's like if you look at editorial spreads everything is chopped at weird angles and like who cares where you cut yeah certain things how do you feel with this does so it, because everything's vertical and her legs vertical does it work or do you feel like you would shoot this any differently so if it were up to me if somebody handed me this photo and said crop it however you want I would zoom in a little bit more and maybe push the model over to the right to get her really on that one third mark or two thirds mark from left to right. And then I would crop a little higher on her leg as well. And uh, I feel like that's a little bit more my style. But that being said, you also it doesn't lose, bother me. You lose some of the interesting railing on the left side that really makes kind of a star pattern. There's all these lines. That's true. I don't know, it's just a really interesting use of, of lines in all different directions. Next up, this is a really interesting image. Feels very dreamy. And I liked this image because it's very hard to place the horizon. Um, if you look at the very top of the image, the horizon appears to be black and along the mountains. But then if you just go slightly down, the horizon kind of moves and it's now in this really dreamy state. But then the horizon sometimes feels like it's the foreground. You know, there's just like lots of ver uh, horizontal lines through this whole passage. And because it's so foggy in the middle, I thought this was really interesting how there's such a separation from one, the foreground element to the background. There's almost not a middle middle ground in this image. Yeah, and uh, I feel like, you know, if you look at rule of thirds on this one, I think you have it vertically and horizontally. Yeah, so you have you're perfect on that. three layers um, from top to bottom, and then on the right, the bush is kind of, you know, cutting into a third. So this one I say is kind of following the rules exactly. Do you think this is shot with a really wide angle lens or is this zoomed in a little bit more? This doesn't, to me, feel ultra wide angle. No. Which is nice, because that's the tendency with landscape photography. Yeah, I would say this, this feels more like 35 to 50, but uh, I've been very wrong 
with <laughs> guesses like that before. What a shot. <laughs> what a lucky shot, goodness. Um, I wonder how the photographer got this. Did they know, you know, have they been working with his band for a while? Do they know that this guy does this and he, they were preparing for this shot? Because, yeah, uh, and then I was thinking when I found this image is what does the original look like? Because I assume it was much wider than this and they've cropped it for this composition, which there's no nothing wrong with that. That's that's what you do, you know. If this was shot and that's the full frame, then it's even crazier how lucky this was. So in terms of the composition here, obviously we have that super interesting diagonal line of the cable. Do you feel like there's too much dead space on the right side? I, I mean, I, I could see that. It's just the littlest bit, you know, if you just moved it a little bit more, you could make this a little tighter. There's part of me, though, that likes that burst back there, and it gives the performer some space to move, you know? You were talking about having your, your face pointed towards the interior of the frame, so they're, they're looking into the dead space. I think there's something, too, where, like, the hair and the movement and the stage lighting, I kind of like the way that it, it sits there on the right. Next up. Now, have we been here? Do you not remember this place? Is this Milford Sound? No. I can't remember all the Lake names. Lake Matheson. Lake Matheson. Yeah, we How? did this with uh, Elia Lacardi, and uh, we woke up morning after morning to get a shot that looked identical to this. Uh, the lighting was very different, and we may or may not have seen all of those mountains. I think that was the issue we kept having. So I kind of put this image in just because I was like, oh, there's Lake <laughs> Matheson, which... Up until that point of our, you know, career and, and working with Aliyah, this was our most hated excursion because <laughs> you have to hike to this place for like an hour yeah, and then hike out for an hour. And we did it four days in a row or something. Yeah. I, when it was still dark, gosh. And I don't even know that we initially even liked this location. We never had a sunrise or sunset like this. I think this is probably sunrise. But we did get a cool image. We got a very different type of photo. Like, Elias shoots stuff like this. This is probably what he wanted. Mm -hmm. But that day, we had this, like, low fog and highlights on the trees. It was very later in the day compared to what he normally shoots. So, obviously, we have, you know, kind of a mirror image, center of the frame type of uh, composition going on here. But something about this feels uncomfortable to me. It feels like the center of this image is above the center line. Yep. But when I look at the, you know, the, the reflection in the tree on the bottom right and then the tree on the it's upper perfectly right. perfectly centered. Yeah, so what is, what is going on here? Is it just, is it's the fact that the camera's height above the water is kind of uh, exaggerating the height of the trees in the reflection or something? The only thing I can think is that where you would place the horizon line you may have to go down a little bit to that other green color. I don't think that's the true reflection. And the horizon line's actually a little lower than the most contrasty part of the frame. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have to, when, when you guys see this, we'll put a line through the middle. So and you if can you tell. make the line where you think the line would be, it feels very high. But if you bring it down just a little bit and draw the line, Maybe that weird muddy area doesn't reflect as much. I don't know. It's definitely a, a strange optical illusion. I was thinking when I looked at this picture that I would do what I think Elia did. I can't remember, but I believe he just centered it more and you know had less of the water, more of the sky, but made yeah. it a little more even. Yeah. And that, this, this might even be a different location than where he was at, because I remember exactly what was to the left. There were bushes coming out of the water. and. This is the location that I crashed the drone. <laughs> it's like the other side. I just side. don't know if we, okay, but I don't know that we're, this picture was taken on the exact dock right. that we were on, but. All right, next up. So maybe I got a little excited here just because I thought this was an interesting photograph. Well, um, it, has a, it definitely has a interesting composition that I would say is breaking the rules. And this is, this is a type of image that I would never, I would never 
take or crop an image like this on my own. It just feels unnatural to me. But seeing it here, I like it. So I, I think this is a And the biggest a rule is what? Placing the subject's head at or you below know, the, center line? The rule of thirds is like you want their eyeballs to be around the rule, you know, on a one third line. And on this image, it looks like the eyeballs are right through the middle of the frame. Um, but they're but it's not the middle of the frame, you know, it's pushed off to the right a little bit, which makes it feel a little uncomfortable, but that's kind of what the whole vibe of this image is. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a polished, perfect Im image. It's almost like a, a collage art or something. Yeah, this, I don't, there's something about this that just, it reminds me of that, that Trent Reznor video, Nine Inch Nails out, you know, the Closer song, you know, it's mm. got all the grunge and the backlight and, it almost looks like she's got a microphone or something. What's interesting about this image though, is it's another one I feel like kind of, is kind of similar to the elephant one where, is there a crop that really doesn't work? There's just so many interesting elements. Maybe if you have her looking out of the frame, that doesn't work, but you can crop in, you can go back wide. There's just so many colors and details and you know, pieces of light everywhere that there's so much interest here. And I think it works because your mind goes straight to her and you're familiar with the human face. But it's, it's like this abstract canvas where you could remove or add more to it. And it all kind of works. Next up. <laughs> so this was what you were saying. Yeah, the human ear and Trump's incredible I, I would just say, once again, his hair matches perfectly. Do you think they Photoshopped that to make it match, or this is a sign of a creator? Yeah. The this, world this has is, purpose. This is proof of God right here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think this just goes to show you, you can't get too serious about all these uh, composition rules because... You, you can, remember you there was there's like a guy like a year ago that would email us personally every other day with one of these and he had his books on Amazon about it and every picture it was like it was he would just find places to put this shape all over images and go look look at how I found you know and it, it, he would find like painters uh, from the Renaissance or whatever and then he would he would find the smallest little conical shapes and he'd just draw them all over the paintings. And I'm like- And then he published books. And this he, doesn't prove anything. He, he has books in Amazon. What do we know? So again, this was an image that's small. The colors on this just really stood out. And now that it's large, I can't tell if I like this object that's in the foreground, if that makes this feel more candid. I almost want another one, maybe somewhere up on the right-hand side or something, but. I just thought this was like an interesting color grade and, and composition for a sports image. So I love this photograph. I feel like this is such a powerful image. Um, however, I want this dude's face right in the middle of this frame. And I feel like he's pushed over just slightly to the left. To the left. So I want to zoom in just the littlest bit so that his face becomes the center of the frame and then to me, that's the perfect composition. Um, but, you know, I, I, I love it the way the photographer did it as well. What if you cropped in more and put them on the, like on the left, like a rule of third, and made the blurry part kind of leading out of the frame? That's cool too. That is really cool too. Yeah, there's a lot, I mean, gosh, such, a, such an interesting shot with the, with the boxer's eyes closed like that. Yeah. Really, really cool. Now, I didn't know what this was, it just stood out to me, and I was like, that looks interesting. What do you have to say about composition with this? I don't even know where to begin. It's just kind of like dead center, you know? It's like maybe it's hard to tell on the iPad. Maybe it's cut off, and the main line of these orchids or whatever this is are at the bottom third of the rule of thirds. But in terms of the verticals, I mean, there's, there's no weight on any given part of this image, I don't feel but all the lines are vertical, so that's definitely a compositional choice there. You know, if you angled the camera up a little bit, you'd probably have these lines going in weird directions. Maybe this is just such an interesting subject matter that no matter what you did, it would look cool just because you don't know what you're looking at, but um, 
Yeah, I don't really know what more to say about this one. I just thought it was an interesting photo. Well, let's move on then. Really interesting shot, cool lighting, cool kind of overall concept here. Um, composition wise, she's kind of rule of thirds. Maybe I'd push the image over just the slightest bit further so that, you know, if she her head really would be on that third line uh, or, you know, second line, whatever. But um, really, I really kind cool of, shot. I kind of like that we need to come up with like a rule of fifths because <laughs> she's really like on the, the two, two fifths maybe. Maybe mm -hmm. she's three fifths. She's like just off of that rule of third. I like how it, it goes back to the, the performer throwing the microphone. Like I think having that back seat of the car she's in I kind of like it. It just gives a good weight. And I think it's the curve of the car and the way that all of the hoods of the two cars in front pull you through the frame. And then the, the cars in the back give you a little more context. Without the cars in the back, you don't know that she's in a junkyard. She's just in a parking lot. Here's the question. Crop in so that she is in the dead center of the frame. Do you think it's a more powerful image? Like this? Yeah. I might like that better. Here's the thing with this image. I think the lighting on her, and maybe it's the bang, there's something about her that I think might be the weaker part of this photo. Hmm. It's, it's that bang that's lit up, or it's the light appears to be coming from the seat where maybe it should be coming from like the overhead light that might be on. It just seems like an unrealistic light position. Okay. But the color and the mood make it all really come together. So for me, zooming in and putting more attention on her, I think kind of weakens the photograph for me personally. All right, next up. Ooh, what a wild composition. I mean, I just, <laughs> I love this photograph. We have converging diagonal lines. We have parallel lines playing with the black and the white, but you still have the shadow going through the whole thing. Really, really nice. Yeah, a lot of work went into this image. What is going on with the bezel of this watch? I think if you zoom in. Oh, it's literally like two different pictures of the watch. That's is it, weird. or does it seem like there's an overlay that goes across it? I, I thought that it was one watch just placed on this thing with this hard line, but yeah, it seems But like if you look at the hard line on the bezel down here on the bottom, yeah, it looks like it's off a little bit. I don't know if that's because of a highlight that was added on the dark side, but then it's not on the bright side, but it's off just a little bit there, which feels nitpicky, but when you see an image that's this well executed, it seems like a little mistake. I don't know that zooming out you would ever notice that, but... I can't figure out if they've just put this black overlay on top and made the whole watch go black or if it's lit that way and it's, it actually can sometimes reflect as that matte black look. So there's something that I want to point out about this image that, you know, kind of forces you to break the rules with rule, rule of thirds is that although the watch face is the subject. You can't, you could, but not in this image, you can't crop out the, the band or the bracelet. Like the one side or the other. Right, it, it, so you know, I'm just zooming around the image trying to come up with different crops myself and no matter what I do, it would feel so wrong to crop out. Even a, if you put it way down at the bottom, something like this, well, so what you've done is you've, you've cropped out both sides. Both and, and sides, I, I and I've, see that. I've put the, the one hard white line in the dead center, you know, in the dead corner. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that would work, but I just don't think you'd ever want to hit one side and not the other. So anyway. And you want to show off the buckle of the watch. Like you really, yeah. for a product shot like this, you don't want to not show the entire band. Yeah, but. How do you think they did this little shadow on the bottom left? You think that's computer generated or do you think this is some kind of glossy object that's on top of 
a white table and that shadow. I don't natural. have the slightest idea what in this is real and what is rendered, but I think that's kind of what makes a good image. Uh, you know, it's like I don't even care. I don't care if it's fake or not. It just it looks so cool. So <laughs> I've seen a lot of dog crapping images with the. This is pre crap to be. Yeah, but clear here. But this, this doesn't even make sense because no, no. Normally, you think it should be flipped? Yeah, it should well, go along his back. Yeah, normally they they do the uh, the shape along the dog's back. It's the perfect mm. shape of nature. But yeah, this doesn't even make any sense. This is just they just literally. So they this is a rule breaker. Is that what you're saying? They broke the rule. They broke the rule, yeah. This so maybe the rule isn't to be followed anymore. Apparently not. Yeah, this image is horrific. Good. Gosh, that image is good. Now, everybody talks so much trash about my image with the God Rays. Remember in our competition? No, I forgot. This Please image, remind me. Please remind me, what happened in that? What happened was, we had a competition, I beat you, but the viewers and the people who rated the images have no taste. Mm -hmm. They hated on my god rays. Oh, I do remember, yeah, I remember that one. And uh, I lost, but it was completely unfair. And anyway, this image is freaking incredible. The problem is, is that in your shot, the whole scene was overcast with no direct light at all, and then you put god rays coming from an unrealistic position hitting a subject that had no hard light hitting it to begin with, me. The difference is this image, real or not, I mean, this is probably fake, but with the spray cans and stuff, you could do that in a room, the fake fog. At least it's coming from an area where there would be a light source. Whatever, bro. So, speaking about composition, first of all, let me just say, this image is so awesome to me. Oh my gosh, just the the pose and the outfit and the retouching and the colors, it's just fantastic. But I would say this is a perfect example of an image that breaks composition rules. I mean, it it doesn't really make any sense in terms of the golden ratio or the rule of thirds or whatever. I mean, it's also cropped in a format that's very Yeah, it's it's got a strange uncommon. crop to it. It's I, like I'm not trying to square, but it, maybe it is. It's in a square family. I might make it a vertical image and zoom in a little bit so that she's kind of on the one third line. But you just get rid of that other exhibit yeah, the thing on, the, on left. the left. But uh, I, I don't mean know. I don't I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it because I like this image so much. Yeah, all the lines are pulling you back into the corner, or you could say like you start in the corner and it's all pulling you into her and then into the alligator on the wall. But then you also have the light rays coming through. It's a really cool photograph. And I don't know, it's like, if you can produce something like this, what do the rules matter, you know? Yeah. Next up, composition wise, what do you have to say about this one? Because I feel like this does not really, it, it doesn't really f feel composed in a technical sense. It just kind of feels like they're fitting. What I like about scene. this image is the closest thing to the camera is the back of this girl, yet that is not where my eye ever goes. I go straight across the one third line to all of the people. And I'm looking mm. at everyone's expression and I'm looking at uh, like the guy is placed in there so well and he's like the perfect physique for whatever's going on. Like, I don't know what's going on in this. It's like <laughs> back, backstage of like a burlesque show or a Vegas show or something. Everyone's too old to be in high school, but they're not like, it's not cheap, it's not sleazy, you know? It doesn't feel like this is like at a strip club or something. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm like, this looks like a very high end commercial ad where they're just like, screw it, we're gonna make it all neon green, puke green, but like, I don't know, I I, it's just the mood of this is so cool, and the fact that the object closest to you, I don't even think it's in focus. 
Like, where's the focus on this? It's like probably like her in the mirror. It might be that light on the mirror. So it's breaking a compositional rule of, of you know, you would never normally put something out of focus in the middle of the frame. But for me, I think this is really cool. I feel like this is breaking a lot of rules. Maybe like you said, the rules weren't even really considered. And it's kind of a snapshot in the sense that they just got this, but it feels too planned out for this to be like a real event. Oh yeah, I, I would say this is a fashion planned out shot for sure. There's no way that this is a snapshot. I mean, look at the girl on the right side. She's, she's got the fashion model pose. Yeah, whoever holds their arm like that. <laughs> Next up. Um, all right, so we've, we recently critiqued some uh, macro shots. I feel like this is very beautiful. Um, Composition-wise, I just feel like this is a beautiful framed shot in the sense that it's all about this animal and the butterfly is kind of framed by the dark areas of the image rather than, you know, leading lines or, you know, being zoomed out a little bit more. It's all about this animal. If I was going to talk about this image, I just think it has some nice lines with the way the, like, the blacks and everything are. The image is, you know, framed up perfectly center, but I just, it's not the craziest lighting. It doesn't pop off the, the page as well as other macro insect shots that we've seen, but I like the lines. It's got some really nice lines in it. I agree. Next up. I believe this is the final image. Well, what an incredible image to go out on. Gosh, this is good. Where do I begin? One thing that I can talk about personally with an image like this is when you get girls or anybody, any human to sit down on the ground like this, at least for me, now I haven't bought that book that just came out, A Thousand Ways to Pose a Model, but it can get very awkward having legs in the frame. Sometimes the feet are coming at the frame. Joey Wright has a tutorial that we put on our YouTube channel about how to pose women. Mm -hmm. And it deals with a lot of these same topics is where would you cut the legs and how would you have the feet look natural? And especially if you want to try to do a vertical image, it's very easy to pose women in a way that is less flattering or awkward or weird or breaks the compositional rules and you start to say, oh, there's something about pretty girl, but I don't know about the way she's framed into the scene. That can go, that, that idea can go wrong very easily. In fact, for me, it goes wrong most of the time. You know, this, I feel like it's just a really good play on not including the legs at all. And just, it's all about the light. It's all about the mood. It's all about her skin tones and it's a sexy image, but it's not, it's a very classy image. Now, this is another example of a, of a composition that I n would never normally do myself. But here's, but I love it, first of all. This is like greater than any image I've ever taken, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. However, do you see the dark area in the upper right-hand corner with that hard sunlight yep. going through it? Imagine that wasn't there. If that wasn't there, I feel like this crop would feel much more uncomfortable. But because of that hard sunlight coming in and you have that dark area of the wall that kind of frames this entire image, I feel like it's bringing this entire thing together. And normally, placing a girl's face like this, just slightly above the center line, feels very weird. But they're not just making this image about her and her face, it's about the lighting on the wall and it's about the entire image working towards this composition. And so I just think this is beautiful overall. Um, and it's certainly breaking all of the standard rules that we've been taught, but it, it, it feels so right because, because the photographer took into consideration the lighting. There's a big catch light in her eyes. How do you think this was lit? So I think the, there is, uh, sunlight or you know uh, super hard light that is firing from back towards the wall and it's just hitting her on her neck right there you can yep. just barely see it it's casting that shadow that's on the wall 
of her, and it's casting the shadow on the wall of whatever's in the background. The backlight is the most obvious. And, How do you think she is lit? And then I would imagine she is being lit by a softbox that's relatively close. I'm just guessing. And uh, you're just getting natural fall off on her legs, and that's why her legs are darker. But it's also angled very low. It's not like a soft box way up high. It's like, it's kind of, you can probably, if you look at her nose, the highlight on her nose, and you see it in her eyes too. It's like, it's almost like level with her nose. Yeah. It's not in the highest position. Yeah, you is, might be right. It's creating all those nice highlights on her shoulders. And then if you look at this leaf, I don't know if that's like a real leaf or if that thing's like gold plated <laughs> or what that is, but you can see the highlight on part of the vein. Like it's just, just a really nice image. Now, this line that's naturally on the wall right here. Yeah. Um, trying to, you know, put the rule of thirds lines in there. Is that perfectly one third? You guys will be able to see. We'll, we'll add it to the video for you, but uh, it's close. Yeah, and I think that line adds something too. Just like you said, the, the hard shadow up in the top right adds something. I think by having that line, it's like a seam. It's it's the sort of thing that a lot of high-end, you know, portrait photographers, they bring in the Oliphant backgrounds and stuff, and they want that textured look, and the seams are, are better in some way, you know? Like, there's a lot of texture here. The same with, like, the little molding strip on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Just all that little texture, just, it adds so much without making this feel like a set, you know? Like, they've literally reduced everything down to the most basic form, but it's just enough to make it interesting. Well, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, these images were absolutely amazing. If you'd like to see who took each one of these photographs, head over to the link. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll put a link to the full post on F-Stoppers. You can see all of the incredible photographers who have uploaded these images to our community. Go check out their portfolios. You can follow each of these photographers as well. And uh, each of their portfolios will also link to their Facebook and Instagram and Twitter if they do all that stuff. So uh, there's definitely a lot of people worth looking into. I really enjoy when we pick the images. <laughs> there's so much more, to, I don't want to say more to say, but I just, I feel less critical and I feel humbled. I'm like, dude, all these pictures are better than anything we take yeah, yeah, yeah. for the most part. So it's kind of fun to do this, but um, I don't think we could turn the critique of community into our favorite images. We need to have people submitting. So. Certainly. Yeah, this is a different thing. Critique the community will stay what it is, but for, for these types of things where we're just kind of showing what's working and what we like or whatever, I think it's great to be able to go in and just pick our favorite images from the community and talk about them. So congrats, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, uploading your images, and we will see you soon.